Okay, I thought I'd make a video of how I make these supercap cells. Um, it won't be a tutorial as such, just a starting point really. Uh, and just how I make them at the moment, and that's going to be subject to change anyway I guess. But if you're worrying, worrying or wondering about what to do, um, this is just an example. So, first of all the mixing bowl itself is uh, what they call a blander blank from Ikea. And it's got a hole in the bottom. Originally this was for experiments with the Davy Bell system, the uh, resonant water heating. Uh, but that hole at the bottom can be important because when you get your mixture inside and you put your vinegar, a few drops of it in, if it's too watery you can have a piece of paper or something underneath to allow it to drain back out and you end up with a decent paste. So it is quite a good idea to have that hole in the bottom there. So we've got red top matches and the first thing I'm going to do is to uh, use the pliers to take the red ends off the end. Uh, basically what you're going to need though is uh, red top matches, about 15 I'm using at the moment. More seems to do better with output at the end, but uh, as I say, all is in flux as it were. There's the metal that I'm using for the electrodes which is um, stainless steel and actually this is from a, uh, a sieve from Dollar Tree. So uh, that kind of stuff you can use, or you can use galvanized steel pieces. Um, this is carbon charcoal from a barbecue that was had many many years ago it's been outside so I don't know whether it needs to be thoroughly washed or whatever but if you've got no activated carbon then burning some wood or something may produce similar that certainly produces similar to the activated carbon I've been using doing this video also because of this which is uh, rust from this that I found outside and uh, I remember Mike Nunley mentioned Ross, and whatever Mike says, I always, uh, I always try and take advantage of, as it were, in experiments to uh, see what happens. A uh, piece of simple paper, copy of paper, and that's going to be soaked in uh, the white vinegar. So anyway, right, we'll start off. I'll just pause the video, make sure the angles are correct and stuff, and then uh, I'll begin making this one. So, as I say, first thing to do, a little mixing bowl there. Get the pliers, crunch down quite softly on two of the sides, say, and then twizzle the thing around lightly in the pliers. And what you'll end up with is the phosphorus in the container and basically not on the match. So I'll do that 15 times. I'll try and do this quickly, or I might edit the video. Collect all 15. In fact, I'll pause there, because no one's going to sit through 15 of these. <laughs> Alright, so there are the 15 match ends in the container there. And here are the, uh, the sticks themselves. Right, so main thing to do is to fish out any little pieces of match stick, of course. I don't think they'll be producing much power. Next thing we do is to add... The, uh, in this case, piece of uh, charcoal. So, this is a bit of an odd design, an odd shape, but what I normally do is put between the pliers and crush. Crush quite heavily whilst keeping the fingers either side, that'll contain most of the bits. Keep squashing away, and the tiny, small granules will end up in the little container here. This is also why I didn't wash my hands before starting this video, because uh, very messy. So uh, make quite a muck of that, but never mind. Try and pick some more up here. Right, and what I'm going to do is also to add this uh, pile of rust. Throw that in. Give the whole thing a good mix-up. I generally use one of the uh, the pieces of the uh, matches. Give that a good old mix up, like I say. Like but also, we need to crush it up as fine as we can. Now, this isn't going to be the same kind of very fine particles that Laser Saber showed, but with being rubber ended handle on the screwdriver, we're not getting explosions. <laughs> <laughs> from the ends of the matchsticks, which I did the first time. I did all this crushing and then realised I wasn't getting any fire, which is uh, which is always good in a wooden house. 
Right, so, at this point too, before showing that to the camera, uh, where I got the lustre on the little cap here from a water bottle, I'll put this over the top because I'm going to add the, uh, the vinegar next. But yeah, so that's what mine looks like, if that can uh, can be seen. A little fly here saying hello. Hello there, square. I'm going to bugger off. Right, so there we go. A uh, very small granular size there. Now we just need a couple of drops, really, of the vinegar. Um, maybe too much. I'll find out. Grab another matchstick, stir it round. I'll show this to the camera in a second. Major thing to make sure it's all wetted, but like a paste. I mean, the paste is what we're after. And in fact, there's not enough gone in there, which is interesting. Just a few drops at a time though. And as I say, any extra, if it ends up too wet and doesn't make a paste, the problem there is it all just spills straight through the, uh, you know, the plating if it's like that. So I'll mix it up. Now, what I've done here is I've now made it too wet. So, wait a second. I'll take the camera out for a second. All right, hopefully that's going to focus. That's too wet at the moment. So I'm going to lift up and sorry about any noise, I'll edit that out. So what I'll do is, actually there is, there's one way that works here, but it's probably only specific to this hole I've drilled. I can put one of these matchsticks in the hole, gently lift up and the excess will drip through, which itself is a nice good black liquid uh, that could possibly be painted on to um, metals uh, such as say galvanized steel sheeting and that might work I don't know yet it's just an idea but uh, just quickly let this drip through the excess until we end up with a paste again uh, the very point here is that I've not made very many of these but I have good results with them so this isn't going to be a final process by any stretch of imagination alright so it's ended up there much more like a paste, a little bit runny yet, I don't know if you can see but uh, basically the idea is to be able to scoop it up with one of these match ends to put onto the uh, metal electrodes so that'll, that'll do just show it again to show what we're looking at now, hopefully the camera will focus anyway much more like a, a slurry sludge now I just take one of these, well, put it onto metal pieces. So that's probably a good example of what I'm saying. That's the consistency of it. And there will be better ways of doing it, I've no doubt. Uh, one thing I've learned so far as well is to not bother to um, solder on wires because you can just clip clip leads to this stuff, and that saves a lot of time in testing. So the idea really is to cover as much of this as possible for the surface area. But I'm going to kind of dash this one a little bit because I know it's on video. Some people might want to watch the car dashings. Right, so that's the one. Let's do the other. And as I say, if it was too liquid either, the stuff would just pour through this and you'd end up with nothing on it. a second and put a bit more on with two hands here on there right <clears throat> next thing is to soak um, the paper and uh, if you just give me one second I'll come back oh, I won't I can do it in there <laughs> right I'll put a few fill a bit in the cap of the actual bottle of it and then soak the paper. The paper fizzes, which is, I don't quite know why. Yep, it's fizzing again. But it fizzes as it's wetting, and I really don't quite know what it is. Is it the bleach? Someone might be able to answer. Now, 
Next thing, put the paper between the two lots of the uh, solution. Uh, it should stay on when turned over. That's another reason for it not being just a, a liquid. Now, what I'll do is I'll come, I'll come back in a second now um, with some tape because I'll use that uh, to, to keep that uh, little cell secure. Okay, here we have some tape. All I'm going to do is pop the tape around. Now, what this also enables, though, um, much, much better idea is to use the uh, the laminating pouches. Uh, they uh, will allow for a tiny little area at the top because what happens is, when you first start charging these, they might fizz, uh, especially if you use 12 volts, 9 volts, 10 volts, whatever, but a couple of amps. And so they can dry out uh, the vinegar. Now, if you leave a tiny little hole at the top, you can add more vinegar and the things come back to life again, which I thought was quite a shock, really. But uh, that's uh, another way of rejuvenating the things when they do dry out, is to simply put more vinegar in and there's no damage to them. Right, so. So then the bottom here. But it also means if you do pour vinegar back into the top, then the tape here, just this very simple method, will enable the, the uh, liquid to remain inside the cell. Anyway, we're not too bothered this time around, but generally what I also do is make, make things very much easier. On this one, this electrode is bigger than that one. So this will be the plus, plus being extra. So I bend a little bit out of the corner, and on the negative side, bend a little bit out in the corner. And that way, we can connect up with the clip leads, and I always know the positive side because it's the, the bigger one. So what I'll do now is I'll tidy up a little bit, and uh, come back, charge it up, see if it'll run the motor. Okay, here we are set up. I've uh, got the motor over there, and what we'll do is we'll just give this about a three seconds charge or something just to make sure that it works. I've got, of course, the negative on the smaller side and the positive on the larger. So uh, we'll connect up here, give it, uh, like I say, about three seconds is all. One, two, three. And just to check that the thing uh, does actually power the motor. So. Connect the motor up, and there we go, spinning it. Alright, it does work. Okay, thanks for watching.